we have just gotten the Unitree A1 robot. And it came in a big wooden crate, which you've already taken it out of. And I guess it comes in this custom travel case. case and we're going to see what's inside it. Ooh. For those who don't know, the A1 is a four-legged crawling robot. And it is designed, I guess would you say, after the Boston spot? Definitely looks like it and uh, has some similar applications. You can walk on uneven terrain with it. It can run pretty fast. Use it for search and rescue or maybe if you want to map your environment. Um, so definitely good for those types of applications. Oh, that is sturdy. Feel how heavy that is. Pretty heavy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so it can also be used for workouts. <laughs> um, if you're in the CrossFit and you want to do some kettlebells, uh, work for that as well. But the body casing on this thing is very strong. I mean, they call it the A1, but it's basically designed just like the Big Dog Spot or the MIT Cheetah robots. It's about the size of the MIT Cheetah robots. So what else did we get in that box? Yeah, it looks like it comes with a couple of spare parts, some charging ports and the necessary cables. Yeah, so those are the, uh, spare, the feet. Spare feet. Yep, because apparently um, I saw online that these wear out after a few months, you have to change them. That makes sense, because there's, uh, there's hard plastic on the top here and then some soft rubber on the bottom. Looks like they probably just bought rubber balls and cut them in half. So we also noticed that on the feet, they have, they must be attached to pressure sensors because you got a little tube there and when I squeeze this, you can feel the air coming out, which is pretty ingenious. So they must use that as one of their sensing systems, you know, for knowing whether it's level on the ground or whether a foot has found the ground or not. This is your charger. So you might have seen on this side here. Here okay. we go. There is a battery here. Take it out like this. Oh, Pretty hefty battery. But it just slides in, slides out. And then you have a uh, charger cable here. Just plug it into the hole like that. Plug it into your outlet. And you just stick this guy in like that. Just uh, takes about two hours to do a full charge. So this has four LEDs for telling you what the battery state is. So a short press lets you know what the state is, and if all four are lit up, that means it's fully charged. And then I'm just going to show that's the case for it. Like I said, this looks 3D printed, but it looks like it was printed with a pretty high quality machine. And I would say the same for this whole casing. And then in the center, you've basically just got a whole rack of round cells, which is smart because that keeps the cost down by using standard batteries. So it's a very sturdy design. Um, you just feel by, you know, holding onto it and moving things around that it's, oh, yeah. it's strong. And uh, we'll show some of the other preview videos that Unitree does. I mean, they, they drop it from like four or five feet in the air and it lands on the ground yeah. and it springs just fine. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's almost like military grade robust. It looks like carbon fiber here for the front. And then what's the camera in there? It uh, looks like it's a RealSense D435 camera. So you get a better view over there. So that's a pretty nice camera that's awesome for navigation and slam. So it's good they have that. Okay, what else do we get in the box? We got the remote control. Uh, looks pretty standard. Kind of looks like a really big Xbox remote. Um, what's supposed to do in the middle? That, I'm not sure. Is that? Um, I, I think it's just there for instructions. You can read the instructions. So it's really wide. Um, says Unitree on it, so that's made in house. Um, I guess that might be where you'd slide a cell phone in and maybe run apps on it, but we don't know yet. So. Yeah, it's definitely possible to uh, download an app to control the robot onto your phone. There's a custom app. Um, yeah, I don't know. As far as putting your phone there, maybe. Maybe. I'm it's got directions. Make sure the robot is placed on the ground <laughs> and then short press, long press, et cetera, et cetera, and how to turn it on. And then it's got some instructions in yeah. here on, on, on how to run the robot. So they've literally made it 
hopefully out of the box once you've charged it up. But there should actually be two knobs somewhere that you can screw in. Not sure where those are. We managed to find the screws that fit into the joystick for the controller. Uh, you just open it up to the right a little bit, and they're in these little slots. You can take them out and put them in the joystick screws. Yeah, and my other guess would be is that the reason that that can expand is yeah. for different size cell phones. Yep. That's absolutely yep. right. I just thought about that. Yeah. So you could slot that in. Which is pretty ingenious. And it'll give you a view of uh, what your robot sees while you're controlling. We've got some more data or charging cables here. And an on off button. Yeah. With an antenna. Not, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Not sure what that's for. This looks very uh, Inspector Gadget, 1980s. Uh, it maybe just be a master kill switch. We've got a lot of uh, ports on top as well. We've got uh, HDMI, some USB, there's another HDMI. Ethernet. And two Ethernets, which, does that mean they got two computers inside here? It definitely looks like something like that, yeah. And then you've got power jacks on the outside, so I don't know if that's for tethered running maybe. Is that what these are? Let's take a look. Those look like they match there, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this looks like it's got uh, ports for tethered running as well. And then we also did get a large rack for this to hang from. <laughs> These first two are the hip, I suppose, and this is run through mechanics down here, which keeps the weight of it up into the center. We are going to try and make this thing run, and we have no idea what we're doing. So this is going to be interesting. Yeah. So it says to get this started, you've got to do a, a short press of the battery and then a long, a long press. press of more than three seconds. Should be standing okay. up soon. <laughs> it says to keep a one to two meter distance. I don't know what those are for America. Safe distance. All right, so there's a normal mode and a sport mode. We're currently in normal mode. Uh, I think what I'm about to do should make it roll over. No, maybe not. <laughs> you gotta turn on the remote first. <laughs> Probably a good plan. Let's try the roll over again. Oh my God. So this is the left analog, controlling up and down and the left and right twist. Ooh. Look at that smoothness. Right analog is doing some twisty stuff as well. Ha, 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 ha.